Saccharomyces boulardii is a probiotic yeast that helps with diarrhea and loose stools. In this upcoming video, I'm going to talk about the practical applications of Saccharomyces boulardii in a diet protocol. And in a separate next video, I'm going to talk about the mechanisms behind Saccharomyces boulardii and how it technically helps with diarrhea or loose stools. As you'll see in this video, Saccharomyces boulardii is not technically recommended for those that are suffering from like bloating or constipation, and you'll learn more why later. While this specific video is going to be on the practical application of Saccharomyces boulardii in combat of having loose stools, I do recommend watching the other video that I'm going to be posting later on the mechanisms on why Saccharomyces boulardii, a yeast, and a beneficial yeast, how these yeasts help make well-formed stools in the gut. And then having the knowledge of what a yeast is, where we find it, bread, soda, wines, uh, etc., where we find them naturally, and how we can apply the whole food sources of yeast to help us have, or to help anyone that has chronic loose stools, apply these practical food-based yeasts in a logical sense that helps them maintain well-formed bowel movements on a more consistent, regular basis. So without further ado, uh, here is my video on Saccharomyces boulardii and its practical application as a probiotic supplement. Talking about Saccharomyces boulardii as a probiotic supplement to combat diarrhea or loose stools means that you also have to talk about creating a specific diet plan that is appropriate for diarrhea. And so uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because when I talk about Saccharomyces boulardii as a probiotic supplement, there is going to be an undertone of what it is that I am going to be recommending and why it and why it's in line with diarrhea protocol or a loose stool type of protocol. If you are not struggling with diarrhea or loose stools, I would say that this is probably not the best type of probiotic that you'd want to be diving into and that there are probably other types of resources uh, or supplements or diet uh, programs that will be more relevant to what you are working on. Uh, and so uh, without further ado, let's dive into the Saccharomyces boulardii as a probiotic and slash protocol for diarrhea. So diarrhea can be caused by two main factors when I look at it through a client's profile. It's going to be either a gut infection through a microbe or your diet is conducive to diarrhea. If you do have loose stools or diarrhea and you are interested in taking Saccharomyces boulardii, uh, what I will bring to your attention is that uh, there are studies that have been done uh, look at the type of dosing that can influence its effectiveness within the gut so that it creates a benefit. And sometimes when you go into the pharmacy and you get a supplement box, sometimes the amount of yeast Saccharomyces boulardii uh, colonies within the, within the capsule are technically not enough. And so you are going to want in, uh, in some of the studies, they have usually about uh, 500 milligrams taking four times a day. And so what that means is that you're getting about two full grams of Saccharomyces boulardii yeasts in the daily diet. The one that I have in my hands right now is only 250 milligrams. So I would need two of these four times a day. So that's eight capsules per day, which is kind of a lot to be honest. And so that brings up the up the idea that if you are having loose stools and you did try the Saccharomyces boulardii and you found it to be underwhelming, I would say double check your dosaging and see if trying again with a higher dosage amount does help. If it doesn't, then you may want to just move completely towards either like a strong medication against diarrhea that will force a more constipating effect or move your or your diet is inappropriate and you need to shift your diet to more of a constipating type of approach. Uh, so and so uh, in this next video clip, I'm going to go slightly, not necessarily off topic, but I'm going to go in the direction of when a diet is not optimal for having solid stools every single day. And it's a very niche section of diet protocols that I have worked with, approaching both 
the gut infection and the way you're approaching your diet are both relevant to the conversation. And if you've been working on one side and the, and it's, the problem is not being resolved, maybe try going to the other side to see if you get a better result. In very general terms, if someone is consuming a lot of like liquid fats, and so this is popular in like the GAPS diet where, or like in like more ketogenic GAPS soup protocols where people will be told to have a certain amount of soup and then they're gonna add like melted fat on top of their soup to create a ketogenic effect that amount of liquid fat will not digest well and it will cause a pulling effect within the digestive system and it will cause diarrhea. I have seen it happen so many times. Um, if you are on a ketogenic diet, so I'm kind of going a little bit sideways, but if you are on a ketogenic diet and you need to have a certain quantity of fat in your diet to combat whatever you're doing, maybe you have seizures, maybe you have a neurological disorder, whatever. Fat is digested well when it is cooked into the food or when it is naturally present in the food. And so what I'm saying is that if you have a plate of, uh, of, a, of a meat or of like eggs or something, you want to have that fat, you wanna cook that thing in fat or you want to have naturally fatty cuts of meat and eat that. It's relevant to the conversation because the diarrhea, it makes a difference. And if someone is having lots of melted fat in their diet and it's not being bound to something, uh, that liquid fat can cause that pulling. And so you do want to be aware of what is causing that pulling. And so it is relevant to the conversation. Next, when taking Saccharomyces boulardii, are there any known side effects? Yes, absolutely there are. And being aware of these side effects is incredibly important. Saccharomyces boulardii, can cause severe fungal infections within the gut. If you are, well, this is also incredibly niche, but if you are having a mycotoxin problem, you may want to be cautious about using Saccharomyces boulardii. This goes even farther into the reason why I keep saying, do not take Saccharomyces boulardii if you do not have diarrhea or if there's not a specific reason for it. Uh, a low dose is fine. A low dose is fine and it won't hurt anyone and it can be very preventative. If in your gut lining, your tight junctions aren't tight and you have quote unquote leaky gut and you introduce a yeast, your yeast can possibly go through your non-tight junctions and enter into the bloodstream and this would cause a fungal infection within the blood and that is the main problem. And so first, what I would say is, I don't want to say fix your gut, because I know you're probably watching this to fix your guts, but I would what I would say is modify your diet first to having a more stool solidifying protocol and then Saccharomyces boulardii. Also, side note, so I have not found Saccharomyces boulardii to be very effective for those that have constipation. Uh, but I do find, like, they find it just to be underwhelming. They're like, yes, or whatever, this, this didn't do anything for me. But for those that have bloating, I find that they really don't like Saccharomyces boulardii and, it's been, and it makes them feel worse. And that kind of makes sense because in the gut, if you have SIBO or if you have this bloating effect, there is this excess of gas that's trapped. And so, and so for gas production, if it's, you know, this way up, you'll, you'll create burping, you'll create uh, that, type of, that type of gas production. If it's more, if it's a little bit farther down the digestive tract, you'll get bloating. And if it's even, and then if it's even farther, farther down, you'll get flatulence out the other end. And so your, that positioning is going to be indicative of where your gut, of where your microbiome problem is. And so what am I getting at? Oh, uh, yeasts are gas producing. And so you don't want to add more gas producing compounds to the gut if you're already having a problem with gas production. But you know, that kind of makes sense. Now I am going to touch very briefly on Diarrhea Merit's its own YouTube video. But if someone were to be, ha if someone had chronic diarrhea, I would tell them, First, let's look at what your diet actually is. Are the foods you're eating conducive to you having well-formed bowel movements? If not, we modify that. And then we talk about like, have you gone anywhere? Do you take any probiotics? Are you taking like 
I don't say a multivitamin, but are you taking something to help replenish the micronutrients that are lost through that watery pull from the diarrhea and you're not being able to hold on to nutrition? That's, that's one of the main problems of diarrhea is that you get dehydrated very fast and it's hard for you to hold on to actual nutrition. And so you want to pay attention, pay attention to that. And then have you done kind of like the run of the mill types of approaches of doing uh, like taking taking Pepto-Bismol, uh, taking Imodium, taking uh, Saccharomyces boulardii. Uh, have you tried the brat diet? Uh, the brat diet is uh, bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast. And these are all very simple constipating stool forming carbohydrates. And that maybe flies in the face of a ton of people. But if you are having liquid come out of you, change your diet just so that it's nice to have a solid bowel movement, even if the foods that you're eating go against your quote unquote diet beliefs. Diarrhea is not fun. I would put us, if you are having a problem with it, I would put aside your diet beliefs and I would do things that cause, cause solidification within the gut to help create solid bowel movement. That is the number one. Whenever someone has diarrhea, I say the number one thing that you need first, first is solid bowel movements. You cannot get better. I doesn't make a difference what supplements I give you. If you are having diarrhea, it won't hold. It's gonna go right through you because you're having diarrhea. It makes no difference. And so excuse me for being blunt, but if you are not having solid bowel movements, the first thing to do, even if it flies in the face of your diet philosophy, is eat a diet that creates solid bowel movements, flat, flat out. And then, and then you make modifications. And then you work with your practitioner or whoever, you know, you know. And then, uh, but sometimes also, uh, just talking with a professional can help, you know, say, oh, there's that food intolerance that you might want to be aware of or, oh, there's too much liquid fat in your diet and you need to, you know, modify that or you know, fill in the blank, talk to someone. And so uh, there is that. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful for those that are interested in both Saccharomyces boulardii and how to approach also loose stools and diarrhea. And so I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Once again, my name is Matthew Kress of Kress Dietetics, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.